Hello everyone and welcome back to DMG. Today I'm doing a comparison of one of the last Pentium 4s and one of the first Core 2 Duos. On the left here we have our Pentium 4 system. It's a Pentium 4 HT631. And on the right here we have a Core 2 Duo E6400. I want to see just how much that new architecture helps it out. Now of course this can't be a fair fight because I don't have two identical systems, but I tried to get it as close as I can. Both of these have two and a half gigs of RAM. Both of them have an 80 gig pretty slow hard drive, but it's, it's enough to load this from. Okay, here we go. That one loaded notably faster. The Core 2 Duo is off the line and the Pentium just now started. And the hard drive, looking at it, it's not at max. Oh, the Pentium is seriously falling behind. That, Just looking at it, it's much slower than what the uh, Core 2 Duo is achieving. Okay, I'm going to get a timer up on my phone. Okay, so after a minute 40, the Core 2 Duo is absolutely crushing the Pentium, which is very surprising. I guess the, um, the, the two logical processors, I, I expected the Pentium to be faster, actually, because it has two logical processors at 3 gigahertz. This has two log uh, logical processors at 2.13, so I expected the Pentium to actually destroy this Core 2 Duo. But, uh, I mean, I'll run another test, because it's the first time I've run Cinebench on both of these machines. So it could just be like a first-time fluke thing, but that's incredible. Okay, we can really see the weakness of the older architecture of the Pentium 4 coming through here. Uh, it's been about four and a half minutes since I started the timer, so about five minutes since I started the test, which, for the record, that's still a very long time for a, Cine, uh, for a Cinebench run. Uh, my workstation can do Cinebench R15. It can complete the render in less than 30 seconds with uh, 16 cores, 32 threads. But, I mean, I guess just the Pentium lacking some of the architectural features of the Core 2 Duo just really sets it back. Very interesting. That's not what I was expecting. Oh yes, um, so something interesting about these processors. The reason why the Core 2 Duo might be a bit faster is it has more than twice the L1 cache, uh, 28K per core versus 64K per core. And remember, that 28K is shared between two threads. So this actually has 128K. Oh, look, it's finished. And what's our time? I hate face ID. 6.05. Okay, so 101 CB, so right over the three-digit mark. But as I was saying, this has way more L1 cache. Both have 2 megs of L2, and L3 wasn't a thing back then. But um, I guess that just goes to show the major architectural advancements that came with the newer processor. So it's been, it's been that long, and the Pentium 4 still hasn't finished. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a big reason why I don't, like, resell or donate Pentium 4 computers, even better ones, as, like, daily use modern systems, because they, <laughs> they're, they're awful compared to CPUs made even just seven, eight months later from a later series. Okay, uh, after 16 minutes, our Pentium 4 
finally finish. So I'm going to stop the timer. Now, um, our Pentium 4 finished with a score of 42, and our Core 2 Duo finished with a score of 101. So that that just highlights the huge differences between the architectures. Also, um, just going back here and feeling the computers, which, yes, I have set up on chairs. The Pentium got very warm, and the Core 2 Duo stayed very uh, cool to the touch. Like, it didn't feel much warmer than it did when I pulled it off the shelf and powered it on. Sorry, I just realized that was not very centered. However, while I'm here, this has an OpenGL-capable GPU, so I might as well run a benchmark on it. It's not the strongest GPU, it's a GeForce 210, basically just to provide basic display output, but thought um, I might as well while I'm standing here anyway. It's probably going to take quite a while to load. Ah, here we go. I don't know if the big limiting factor is the CPU or the GPU in this case. I would assume it's the GPU. Not too awful. I've seen worse. Six point three nine FPS in OpenGL. But that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. And uh, right now I'm just gonna turn that computer off and plan to never turn it back on again. There we go. Uh, if you want an idea of how slow it is. That's how long it took between pressing the power button and it shutting down. Well, yes, thank you everyone for watching. See you next video.